Now, real people running real small businesses and how they solve real problems. This is How They Do It. So one of the toughest things anybody has as a business manager, but it seems so simple, so simple on the surface, is hiring the right person. So, so beyond putting out an ad someplace, what do you do? That's a good question, Doug. Um, it's, there's nothing more essential in a business than getting the right people in the right position. And that's gotten to be a bigger and bigger challenge over the years. And there's a lot of good reasons for it, but we have some approaches that, that we teach the people that work with us that are amazingly effective, and yet they're, sometimes our grasp for the obvious isn't all that obvious, and this happens to be one of those scenarios. <clears throat> we believe that for you to hire the right kind of people, you have to begin to understand yourself to start with. And what that means is a number of things. If I'm going to expect and everybody wants, we, we take skills as a threshold. We understand you have to have the skills. If you're going to be a machinist, you've got to know how to be a machinist. But that simply is where you start. The rest of it is about getting the right person that can work with you. And that starts with understanding who you really are. And how many of us understand what our values are and what our uh, motivators are and what our, what's driving us to do the things that we do? And Because it's like anything else in life. If I'm going to find somebody that I'm compatible with, I'm going to have to find somebody that uh, has a reasonable level of agreement with a whole lot of different, different points. And uh, we actually talk about if you're going to ever get this right, we start with what a program that helps us to understand ourselves. And actually the one that we use is probably the most effective program I've ever seen. It's called Elevations. What Elevations basically does, it looks at your personality styles in the workplace and it talks about what your uh, it talks about what your value systems are, it talks about what your characteristics are, it talks about your leadership styles, it talks about a number of other factors, and it gives you some insights as, as to who you are. And actually, it's like a lot, of these, a lot of these other evaluation tests that have been given over the years, it breaks them down into four different temperaments. And it talks about the person who's an organizer, in it, or the person who's a liberator. And the, each of those has, and I won't go through the details of all the different scenarios, but when I begin to understand who I am, then I begin to make it possible to find somebody who <clears throat> doesn't necessarily ape everything that I am, but at least is compatible. If we got two completely different, if I need somebody that's really detail-oriented and really able to get in there and do the minutia that I know is not one of my, one of my strengths as a manager and a leader, then I've got to make sure that I get that aspect of it right. So we, once we understand who we are and what it's going to take, and I literally coach my people to build a profile of themselves, and that's where it really starts. When I and I've talked about it for years that most businesses struggle in hiring the right people because they do not understand who they are. And then all of a sudden, they, you, you bring somebody in the door and it doesn't take very long to find out, gee, how did I miss that? Warren Buffett actually takes this and breaks it into, he does something a little bit different, but he says the first three things, the three things you have to look for when you're hiring somebody is you have to look for intelligence, you have to look for energy, and you have to look for integrity. And if you don't find that integrity to begin with, don't even bother with the rest of them. So. A little more detailed than that, but he understands what's most critical to him. I myself have a profile, and I know exactly who is, what it's going to take in terms of our ability to work together, and I also know what my hot buttons are. My hot buttons are those things that are deal killers for me. I take something as simple as, simple as the uh, willingness to say, look, if you make a mistake, and I know we're going to make mistakes, I make mistakes, let me know about it. I can't do anything about the thing that I don't know. It sounds like, from your description, this takes forever and a day to do. And if I need somebody yesterday, how do I put my needs to immediately solve a problem with an additional person together with, with this 
uh, system that you're talking about? Well, it doesn't. Re in other words, does it? Can yeah. I make implement it quickly? Yeah, it depends upon how you define quickly, Doug. And I know that's not much of an answer, but frankly, uh, you're probably better off to go to a professional on it. And that's one of the mistakes that we're making. And the technology told everybody they could get any the perfect employee. Well, what they can't get is the aspects that we're talking about. Yeah, there are not none of the job boards and none of the technology boards know how to identify what you and I are talking about here. Now, it can be done, but it takes time. So when you find yourself in a crisis position, your best solution may well be to get somebody to step in on a temporary basis. And there are a number of companies, and we do certain things within our own uh, consulting practice that, uh, uh, you know, where we can bring, bring a, for example, an accountant in on a short-term basis on it because you're better off to get somebody that can do the technical piece of the job temporarily the worst employee you're ever going to hire is that one you put in in a big hurry, and you really don't know. Uh, I mean, it's really like throwing the dice. You're going to be wrong more often than you are right. But what you really need is for a short period of time is to get somebody that can do the job. So that's the short answer to your question. I think I don't think there's a bigger mistake you can make than, the, than to hire somebody that you really haven't vetted because you've got a long-term commitment to that person. They've left the job, and you're just not going to get... And there's a lot of B candidates that are being perceived as A candidates out there now. And so, uh, you know, that's a whole world and it's really a discussion for a completely different time because it's so, there's so many challenges in it. But, uh, but, you know, understanding yourself is where you start with and you build the profile. Who's going to be able to fit into my organization? Who do I need on my team? And we may have teams that do a lot of similar things, but you've eventually got to have somebody that's going to have that organizational leadership skills. You're going to have to have somebody that's the idea person in that organization. And you start beginning to, getting to know just what you're looking for so when you see it, it's, you, you've got a clear idea of what you're doing, but that's just step number one. The next piece of that step is how you're going to be able to, to make sure that the performance that you get is the performance that you hope for. The bigger mistakes that continue to be made in more organizations than you can ever imagine, some of them with lots of theoretically lots of competency and lots of resources to get it right, is the fact that they look at job descriptions. Uh, when I hire somebody to be an accountant, I know exactly what it is for my organization, and it's different for my company than it may be for yours. So I develop what I call, we like to call them position agreements. And those position agreements say that here's what is going to be expected that I will accomplish and, and then be able to, on a regular basis, monitor those key, what we call key performance in, indicators. And that's another piece of it that's missing. Most people in an organization, you'd be surprised who does not have those kinds of things in place. If I can't tell you clearly what you should be able to expect from me in terms of performance to make sure that you're doing what I hired you to do, then how can I hold you accountable for that? Uh, I've had people that, that have been in an organization come to me and said, I never understood what I was supposed to do. And so it's, it's, it's literally a threshold again. If you're going to hire people and expect the highest performance out of them possible, you're going to have to make sure there's a clear understanding of what that means. You know, you look at the next piece of it, and another one of the things that happens is the, is the fact that there is not not a, a consistent performance feedback. I should be able to know on any given day, rather than wait for six months at the end of the year, whether or not I'm doing what's expected of me. So we come in, we make sure that the personality fit is right, that it's the right person for that team. We make sure that they understand exactly what they're supposed to be doing and what, what they're expected to accomplish in that position. And then we make sure that we let them know when it's working and when it isn't working. So it's, it's kind of like that rate, like that like that race car, sometimes you have to, I'm just watching the IndyCar races and they have to keep tuning it and making adjustments and I think that's a perfect example as a matter of fact. The wings go up and down a little bit where they need a little more force or a little less force or carburation changes so that we continue to refine and improve the results that we're looking for. They talk about, um, in fact I was trying to think of who it was, oh it was, um, oh gee, Peter Drucker. What he said was that 80% of, of problems in an organization 
come from management because management doesn't have either one of these first two pieces of the puzzle in place. If I don't, I haven't been able to tell you what you're supposed to accomplish and I'm not willing to continue to keep you on track, then I really can't blame, <laughs> I really can't blame anybody but myself for the failure to do that. So the worst challenges, you, and you talk about demotivators, that's exactly what happens. If I never know whether I'm getting it right or getting it wrong, then, then it's really my issue, it's not the employee's issue. And what ends up happening, obviously, the employee goes down the road, the job does never gets done the way it's supposed to be. So the other part of this is the third and the final part of that, is this is what we talk about when you talk about coaching. You know, um, and I'm going to throw, the, throw what I think is a real wild card in the mix now, and that is the fact that we are now in a work situation where we basically have four different generations of workers in there. We have what I would call the old, the depression area workers, and there's a few of us, us still around. You have the baby boomer generation, you have the Gen, Gen X generation, and then the Gen Y or the, or the millennials in there. And we know, research tells us, that there will be roughly a 30% shortage in leadership, competent leadership, in the years to come, and that is already beginning to impact us. And you can see it when you walk into a business. And when you begin to assess what the leadership skills are and you find out that they don't have them. Too many people that I know or my generation, I'm right on the edge between the baby boomers and the, and the uh, you know, I'm a couple years too old to be technically a baby boomer, but that generation is retiring, it's moving out of the workforce, not as fast as we really anticipated, but it is going to be slowly but surely it's going away, and the Gen X generation does not have that same drive that we had. A lot of them are real happy with their, with their uh, what we call the, uh, not their vocation, but their avocations, the things they do outside of the workplace, and they don't have that same level of all, be, want to be, I thought everybody in life wanted to be the manager or leader of an organization. I had to be probably in my 40s before I realized I was mistaken on that. And, uh, but the good news is, is the millennials who get so badly castigated because they're not what we are, and sometimes it's just, you know, we look, we tend to look at people sometimes like, well, they're not like me, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the people. What it simply means is they're different. And one of the good things about that generation, and they will be the leaders whether we like it or not, because we're going away, is that if we provide the training that's relevant to what they're doing so that they can get that high level of accomplishment and recognition in their lives and not have to wait till they're 60, or 60 years of age or 70 years of age to get that, we may find that some of them, and, that, and I know it for a fact because I see them in workplaces in different ways. In fact, I've got a young man in one of my classes now who it fits in that generation. You couldn't find anybody that's got a higher level of motivation. Just a great young man, period, and he is an absolute delight to work for. Give me something I can work with that will help me get better. And his motivations aren't about greed, they're about, about his family and they're about the kinds of things that a lot of us think that uh, the younger generation doesn't necessarily care about. So, uh, And that's about helping, coaching him and giving him the tools and giving him the understanding of what it takes so that he can accomplish his ambitions and his desires in life. Then you find that you've got a highly motiv motivated individual to work with. And of course, that for me is, is uh, that's like manna from heaven. <laughs> Be candid about it. So, you know, Doug, I think that's a pretty good synopsis of that whole what it takes to get the right people in the right place and how to, how to manage their performance. I mean, the truth, of, the truth of the matter is we never manage people, we manage the things. And what we're trying to do is manage the activities. And in so doing, we end up with a particular result as a consequence of that. So. Give our uh, uh, audience an idea of where can they get hold of you. Well, they can get a hold of me, and we love talking to the people out there that are interested in what we do and interested in being better at what they do in their work, workplace and in life at 209-444-6549. Uh, I'm the president of Strategic Management Resource Associations. That's a group of consultants that have come together to provide their expertise to, to see if we can help businesses. We all have a passion for what we do, and I work with some really great people. Uh, my website is strategic is www.smra1.com or the email is barney at 
smra1.com. And look forward to hearing from anybody that has an interest in talking about leadership and people and how to get. This is about people, and that's, that, that is my passion in life.